All right, ladies and gentlemen, instead of focusing on negatives, I'm going to start focusing on positives, okay? So, this information came from It's Mo channel. If you don't know It's Mo, she's very positive most of the time with the DCU movies. I really enjoy this, and this came from her. Shout out to It's Mo, shout out to JVS, shout out to Samuel Aten, shout out to a Man of Steel fan gives hope. Y'all channels are very positive. I like what you guys are doing. And just shout out to you guys. But It's Mo. She had something to say about the Alex Ross uh, poster. Or at least Alex Ross inspired poster of the Justice League. So she went up on I think it's Twitter or one of those social media sites. And she contacted Clay Enos. And she asked Clay Enos, you know, I love this poster here. When do you think Superman might be shown in the poster? And Clay Enos didn't respond. So what she did was she put her version of Superman inside of there. And there are a number of people who put their version of Superman inside of there as well. And lo and behold this morning. Lo and behold this morning. In the Justice League poster we got BAM! Superman is in the poster. <laughs> I want to show you something nice though. I want to show you something nice. From my right, which will be over here, to my left. Check this out. Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Uh, we got Cyborg, and we got The Flash. Now, when we look at the Alex Ross painting, it's exactly in that order as well. Of course, Cyborg's not there, so he kind of misses, and you got The Flash. So check it out. Alex Ross painting. Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, and The Flash. Green Lantern is to the side, but... He's not in the picture so far, but I'm sure they will have the seven. There will be a Green Lantern added to them at some point in time. All right, so I thought, man, you guys must enjoy this. This is cool. If you have the, uh, if you have the hot toy figures, man, you will have a blast. Or if you have the Medicum figures, you can do that. Or if you have the, uh, um. I forgot what they are called. But those figures as well. The Justice League. All of that's really cool. And. Remember this photo? Of course it usually has the words. You can't save the world alone in here. Right here at this point. Well. Bam. There is Superman. <laughs> I really love it. I really love it. I really love it. I really love it. I love it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Woo! So, there's Superman in there. I know some of you have gone off to watch Justice League in the theaters. I hope you have a blast in the theaters while you're out there watching it. Boom! There's Superman again. <laughs> he looks good, too. Henry Cavill's Superman looks dope. And he's in the front, flanked by Wonder Woman and The Flash. And Batman's in the back, flanked by Cyborg and Aquaman. And it's almost complete. There's one more member missing. Unite the seven, baby. Unite the seven. It's all good. It's all good. I want to give you all some more positive energy. And this comes from Taika Watiti. Taika Watiti is known for the Thor Ragnarok movie, which I didn't so much dig. But you know something? It's all love anyway. So I'm not mad. It's doing well in the cinemas. It's making its money. So I'm not mad at it. And he said, I mean, I don't know how else to comment on this other than thanks. Support each other. Subliminal Love, Thor Ragnarok, Justice League Assemble. Well, he's kind of doing it like, you know, Avengers Assemble. Uh, sla uh, hashtag Crossover, Hashtag Skull Life, ha at Band Winder Bum. All right. And he's just showing some love. And why he's saying it's subliminal is because Justice League, besides the poster being subliminal and kind of working with Thor Ragnarok, is talking about coming together and Thor Ragnarok was talking about coming together and in Justice League if you was paying attention you would have heard the Avengers see, uh, theme from Avengers Age of Ultron inside of there because guess what Danny Elfman he did the theme for that too <laughs> and so I thought it was some subliminal love going on in there and um, you gotta have some love for uh, what Whedon and they are trying to do crossover and even heard some of the actors in Justice League speaking about hey 
yeah, I wouldn't mind having a crossover movie with this guy or this guy or this guy. So they're trying to set up a crossover at some point with Marvel, which would be cool. That would be cool. Uh, come together over me, over hope, right? Superman, over Superman, over hope. And basically, the hope is that somewhere down the line, these Marvel, these, these, these uh, comic book movies can cross over. Think about it, folks. Joss Whedon, Zack Snyder, who's a DC director. Pick Joss Whedon, who's a Marvel director, to work along with him. Danny Elfman's been on both sides of the aisle. He's done DC movies, he's done Marvel movies, and he's back home at DC again. Think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. You know, and borrowing from all kinds of lore in the DC universe to put his, 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 music, his music together. You know what I mean? It's a love thing, folks, at the end of the day. You know, we have to work together. And that should be a sign to the Marvel and the DC fans that we need to show love to each other. Zack Snyder showed love to Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon shows back love to Zack Snyder. Do you guys get it? You know what I'm saying? And yes, some of the people working for Joss Whedon can't see the big picture, why he has to cut down the movie to a certain length. You can't see it. Warner Brothers trying to accommodate everybody. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's a love thing, folks. It's a love thing. And it's about time we stop having these turf wars. It's about time at least we sit down and talk with each other and listen to each other. I don't particularly like Marvel movies. I like love them. But I can at least go out with somebody and watch a Marvel movie and sponsor it. Because I put my money to Thor Ragnarok. And I'm probably going to do it a second time. I don't, I, don't, I don't really particularly like Thor Ragnarok. But hey, I might put out my money for that. Show some love. Because you see, you have to understand, it's a love thing. I'm mostly a DC fan. I mostly love DC movies. Not all DC movies, but I love DC movies, right? Because of you know the depths that they have and the little oomph that they have in them that brings about real life situations. But don't get it twisted. I don't hate people who like Marvel movies. And I don't hate Marvel movies. I don't play those political games. You know what I'm saying? Politics in the United States of America has people divided. And it's so partisan now that people are compromising their religious beliefs and they're compromising truth and they're following the narratives. Come together. That's what these two movies are saying. The same message. One saying it with a much more um, fantastical point of view and the other one saying it in a much more grounded, realistic point of view. But they're both saying the same thing. You know what I'm saying? One is using comedy to say it, the other is using realism, uh, drama, adventure, horror, some sprinkles of comedy, but mostly drama, action, adventure to say it. And I think that when you look at Justice League at its core, at its heart, it's about hope. So I hope that we can keep this hope alive. And I also hope the best for Justice League. It's off to a rough start. It needs all the help it can get. And if the entire comic book industry can rally behind Justice League, it will make it. It will make it. And we will get more DCEU films that everybody all across the board can enjoy. That doesn't have to compromise its dc ness and its grittiness and its groundedness and its uh, desire to relate to our world but yet have other elements in it with each and every director. So that's my take on it. You know I'm a huge Zack Snyder fan in the sense of I've liked his most recent movies. Like I've liked Watchmen. I've loved uh, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch is a really underrated movie. I've liked Owls of Gahu. I've liked uh, all of his DCEU movies and his story right for Wonder Woman. All right? Love them all. Zack Snyder always challenges us. And I've talked about some concepts in his, in his movie, in, in Justice League, his latest movie. And there's some things that he challenges us with in that movie as well. But I'm not going to go into all of that. I just wanted to highlight this. Love the posters. You know I'm going to geek out on this stuff for a while. <laughs> Superman, baby. Yo! I love Henry Cavill's Superman. Henry Cavill's on the same page with Joss Whedon concerning Superman. And guess what? Do you think Zack Snyder's off the page with him? Hell no. 
because Zack Snyder's on the same page with Joss Whedon because Joss Whedon used what Zack Snyder was doing to carry out Superman. So, if you guys think that Joss Whedon's at odds with Zack Snyder, you are wrong. Because Zack Snyder calls Joss Whedon and company on the cast his friends. His friends. So if you guys are going a rift against Joss Whedon and all the costs that Zack Snyder works with, then that's sad. Because he considers them his friends. Alright? But don't worry. I'm sure Zack Snyder will put out a statement soon enough that will settle everything. Deborah Snyder, she's such a peacemaker. I love her a lot as well. There's, these are quality people, man. They're not into the hate game at all. And um, she said it all. She said... It does not matter uh, about the production. Let's not talk about the production issues. These characters are what matter. And this is the more important thing. And it's so true. I mean, all of those things are secondary to these characters. And the symbology, the, the, the meaning behind them. Maybe I didn't dig Thor Ragnarok. But it doesn't mean that there wasn't substance in the movie. And I, I pointed out the substance in the movie. Didn't appreciate everything in the movie, but there was substance in there, right? So, similarly with Justice League, a movie I loved that had the tension. It had everything that I wanted in a movie. I felt like this movie was made for me. And even the way how it ended on an inspirational, optimistic note, while a little bit on the, on the, on the wild side, I would say. <laughs> it's kind of like out there a little bit with the flower things. <laughs> It was kind of extreme, but hey, 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 it's what it is, you know. It was kind of like a fairyland kind of crazy. It was just kind of, it was kind of out there. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that with the flower thing. But other than that, you know, I thought it ended in a very nice way, in a kind of mysterious way, like, you know. But I don't want to, I don't want to spoil the movie for those of you who haven't seen it. I still hope that those of you who didn't see it, you know, there's a there's a guy who said he's not spoiled by movies, but he hasn't gone and seen Justice League yet, and. Dude, what are, you, what are you waiting on? You don't have money? What, what's your problem, man? Go see it. Go see the movie. We need we need as much people watching this movie as possible because Warner Brothers spent like $300 million. There's a reason there's a, a, a NA sign on the budget for uh, Justice League. It's because it's very, very expensive. It was a very, very expensive movie to make. And they were just trying their damnest to get the movie that everyone will enjoy. So you got to understand, if this movie flops, you can forget about <laughs> the DCE. You, you guys got to understand what I'm saying. And maybe it's not hidden home to a lot of you guys because you, you take it for granted what you have until it's gone. And this is a time of action, folks. <laughs> I'm very serious. I'm not I'm not trying to inst instigate fear. I'm trying to get you guys sober. Some of you are drunken. Some of you don't understand the reality that's about to happen. This DCE universe is going to be pulled from under it. Warner Brothers, if they don't get back to their investors and their sponsors the money that they're supposed to get, <laughs> you can you can forget about Aquaman. You can forget about Wonder Woman. I'm serious. All right? So go out there, become a good soldier. And go see this movie. Invite people to go see this movie. The thing about it is, whether you're a Marvel fan or a DC fan, you're gonna like this movie. That's the thing. It's that kind of movie. I don't. I didn't hear anybody say that they didn't have a good time at this movie, except for um, critics. Okay, certain critics at least. So, guys, go out there and invite. This product's gonna sell itself. This product is good. Go out there and check out this movie. I shouldn't be pleading with you guys about this like I did with BVS. I just never expected DCEU fans. I didn't expect that. That's the thing that hit me with a curveball. I didn't expect DCEU fans to go with this fake narrative against this movie after I had been convinced, oh, this is definitely a Zack Snyder film. I was convinced and I was, I was comfortable with it. I told you guys, Tom Cabler, you, you be my witness. I told you guys... That if this movie was not a Zack Snyder film, I'd have gone up in arms. Everybody who knows me knows I tell the truth. I don't play partisan games. I'm not just a blind DC fan, right? If the thing is crap, like Batman and Robin was crap. If it's crap, and if it's a Marvel film, I'm going to tell you it's a Marvel film. I told y'all Wonder Woman was no Marvel film. I don't care what nobody says, it wasn't a Marvel film. 
Marvel films don't begin so sober. This film is not a Marvel film. All right? There are some Marvel elements in it in terms of the musical soundtrack, but in terms of the story, the dialogue, and everything else, it is not a Marvel film. And I must say, Josh Whedon did a hell of a job of integrating his kind of way and his kind of style in with Zack Snyder's style, where I do know that Zack Snyder was more like Joss Whedon-ish in terms of his comedy and his humor and, and all those kinds of things. Especially that, I can't spoil the movie, otherwise I would. <laughs> I was just about to say something. Oh, man. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Leave your comments down below about what do you think of these posters? What do you think of this movie? And feel free to talk, but just remember, don't spoil anything. This is not a spoiler video, okay? We're going to get to the spoiler discussion over the weekend. Trust me. We're going to gonna spoil the daylights out of this movie. We're going to talk long about it. But in the meantime, we need to be conservative and we need to be, um, we need to be considerate of the people who haven't seen the movie. Notice how responsible I've been. I, you know, I've been reckless in terms of my language and cursing people out, but I've been responsible when it comes to not spoiling the movie for people. And if you really are anxious to see this movie, you should be. Um, but just remember, go in there with an open mind, as I like to say, or go in there not trying to let this movie fulfill some kind of expectation that you have. Just go in there and just sit down and let the movie carry you somewhere. That's how I always do it with every movie. That's how I give, I give movies a fair shake. Thor Ragnarok, I went in there and I let the story tell its story. All right? And there were certain things in the story that from the get-go with those jokes, from the beginning of the movie with the jokes, that kind of threw me off and I was like, man, is this what I'm going to be seeing? And it really was that. And that's just too bad. But anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. And I don't really like jokes, 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 jokes. I, where, whereas an audience may laugh. If I laugh at a joke, trust me, man, it was funny. I have a, a sense of humor too, though. So some things that people don't find funny, I find funny. So it is what it is. But, you know, I, I, probably, I probably found amusing three things in Thor Ragnarok. And that's, even the Flash. Well, a lot of people were laughing at the Flash, some of his jokes. I wasn't, you know. But I appreciate the Flash, and I appreciate what they were doing with Ezra Miller. You know what I mean? So, I'm not really a hee-hee-ha-ha -ha person. But when I do laugh, I do laugh pretty hard. Very, very hard. So, <laughs> you know. Because if you get me, man. If you catch me. Like, when Wonder Woman, they caught me off guard, man. I was, I cracked up. I was really laughing at a certain moment in Wonder Woman. I just Edda Candy holding that shield and that sword. And she was like, man, this thing is heavy. I was I was laughing, but yet I was so empathetic towards the character, you know. I'm like, oh, man, they just loaded her up like a donkey. That's so bad. <laughs> and they didn't even turn around and look at her. They just kept on going. I was like, what? <laughs> that was so funny to me. Yeah. So, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Let me just say. One of the funniest moments I have ever seen on the screen. And it reminds me kind of like of Warner Brothers, Daffy Duck and Porky Pig. You know, those kinds of characters. The Roadrunner and, you know, the, the whatever that thing was. The Wolf or whatever. It was so wacky. It was when Grout just started dancing to music in the middle of a battle. I'm telling you, man. Still, to this day, that, that image is etched in my mind of Grout just jumping, flinging his foot up in the air and his hands and freezing and that's Guardians of the Galaxy. That pretty much summed up the whole movie for me. You know, I had to watch the movie. I just kind of fall asleep in certain parts, but that made the movie for me. And I knew this was a, like a, a way out there comedy and I knew I knew I was going to enjoy it. So if you catch me off guard, man, and you start me laughing, then I might never stop laughing because you got me, you know. That's the kind of humor sometimes you have to catch a person with. It's not necessarily the predictable beats. It's sometimes the, the odd beat that you catch you on. And you're like, I didn't expect that. <laughs> catch me oh God right there. So it's that kind of thing that uh, makes me laugh in a movie. So, yeah, I'm kind of like one of those executives. You go in and you start pitching your jokes and none of them are laughing. You know, I'm kind of like that kind of guy. I can be really funny and rock us as well. But for the most part, I can also be somebody who's just following certain things in the movie. D do I chuckle at times? Oh yeah, I chuckled at times. With, I, and The Flash made me laugh at, at a certain thing. A certain thing in the movie was just hilarious. And it's an odd moment in the movie where I chuckle and sometimes nobody else is chuckling. And I'm like, mm, that's me. I got that offbeat humor. 
And there was a point in the movie where the Flash said, okay. <laughs> it was hilarious because of how his face looked. His eyes were open wide, wide, wide. And he was like, okay. He's taking in all the information and he's like, okay. I was like, wow, that's funny. Just the way how he did, he did his face and how he said, okay. He's trying to process things. But his mind, he's kind of like, to me, the Flash in this movie was like Sparky the dog. You know, very energetic. And he burns energy like crazy. So he's always hungry. His blood sugar level can always fall down. He can catch a stroke just like that. And he, he, he's, he's, he's uh, frightened so easily because he's so, he's almost always, his senses are so high, you know. So that's funny about the Flash. He's actually very fragile. He's a very fragile character, which is very interesting. But he's so fast. So I found that very interesting, how they depicted the Flash. But don't worry, we'll go into more detail about the characters later on. Uh, very later on, you know. So yeah, he's very he's a sensitive character, actually, the Flash. Uh, but I can't talk too much about him right now. But it's, it's very intriguing, these characters that they brought to the screen. And a lot of subtleties to them and, and nuances. Excellent job by uh, Zack Snyder bringing these characters to the screen. Quite frankly, he's really good at casting characters. And as for Ezra, Ezra Miller, you know, and Grant Gustin, Grant Gustin's great for TV, but Ezra Miller brings something totally different to The Flash that's not necessarily in the lore of The Flash, but he brings this sort of humor that's awkward and strange, but still at the same time, something that you would say in your mind, but actually, that's something I was thinking, you know? So that's the interesting thing about uh, The Flash in this movie. All right, guys. And, of course, nobody really thought that the, the Flash's metabolism is so high that he has to constantly eat, you know, to maintain himself. But that's a spoiler. Oh, shucks. I just spoiled the movie. Sorry about that. You guys have a great one.